Hi, I'm Tim Heidecker, the sole creator and host of On Cinema at the Cinema, and I'm here with, uh, a, uh, what's your name again? Greg Turkington, but this isn't On Cinema at the no. Cinema, so I could technically be the host of this segment. And but we you are, are going to be guest. talking about we that? are going to be talking about what movies might win the Academy Award. What this movies year. will win the Academy Award. These this are year. our Oscar picks. Quiet at this point in time because there will be more movies coming out and these Shut picks up. are subject Go to, the to thing. change. You're Edit. not the host here. This isn't on cinema at the cinema. I'm the host here. I'm going to say Judy because it has the lineage. If you think about The Wizard of Oz, Judy is sort of an unofficial sequel to The Wizard of Oz and that you're seeing Dorothy as she would have been had she lived. And Oscar likes to reward the past. That's why John Wayne won so many Oscars near the end of his life. And so I do think finally an Oscar for Judy Garland for Judy. She wouldn't win. Judy Garland wouldn't win the Oscar, though. Ah, but the character, if, they do, if they do a best character mm -hmm. award, which they've been talking about for years. I wondered why they didn't cast, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering why they didn't cast Lisa Minnelli as the part. It would have been a little more respectful, you know. From Cabaret thing, yeah. and? Um, I think that was the only film she Arthur. made. Arthur. I have to go with The Joker. I think, you know, it's been a while since Robert De Niro has walked away with Oscar Gold. I think this is the year for him. You know, obviously, I think Jack Nicholson won it for The Joker back in the Tim Burton Batman day. He, I think he won Best Supporting Actor. One for the cuckoo's nest. Yeah, and now it's a chance for Jack, uh, for Rob, for Booby D, Bobby D to to bring home Oscar for his pretty spooky portrayal of one of the great villains of the Batman uh, 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 show. Well, Little Women is a, just another chick flick, a rom-com from, uh, you know, it, I, it's a period piece, quite literally, you know, with the women. Uh, not something I'm going to see. I don't think I, I don't think Oscar's going to pay much attention to that. Um, I think a classic Mendez war movie is going to be the way to go. World War One, very unpopular war. Be fun to see legs getting blown off and people's faces exploding from, and getting po getting poisoned. Like Night from, of the Living Dead. Mu uh, getting poisoned from mustard gas, and I think like it'd be Aaron fun. Rockovich. It'd be a fun Christmas movie to see the mass poisoning of young soldiers from the, in the European front dying in the trenches and drowning in their own diarrhea. Uh, it's a, just a fun experience for the audience. I'm going to go with 1917 strictly because it's 28 minutes longer than Little Women and moviegoers want more movies, not less. The movies are equal in quality. They're both five baggers and so you look at the secondary uh, uh, data, which would be the running time, and that's why Oscar Gold will indeed go to 1917. We'll see if if Martin Scorsese uh, is up for Joker and Irish, The Irishman. Um, well, it would be in the perfect world they they win they they win them both and they get the two Oscars. It's an official tie, and Booby D also gets main actor for Joker and main actor for Irishman. And it's good to see the Irish being respected once again in the picture, in the motion pictures. You know, there was a period of time, ironically, during the 17, in, during 1917, the World War One period, where the Irish were, you know, executed for being Irish. But Peter O'Toole yeah. has won Oscar gold, and he's very Irish. And I will, I will uh, toast a, a pint of Guinness if the Irishman uh, wins gold. It's good to see a movie about the Irish. I think that this competition really showcases a point that I've been making for years, which is that we need two Oscar ceremonies, one for movies between January and June 30th, and one from July 1st to December 31st, in which case both movies could win, and also the public would appreciate that. I think it's kind of unfair to reduce the number of nominees to such a small amount which you have to do when you're looking at a year's worth of movies. That's thousands and thousands of movies that are deserving and only a handful can get it. So I would say twice a year or even quarterly and that would solve the problem. I've got to give this one to Sandman though. I think, uh, you know, Uncut Gems 
is his funniest movie since I think maybe uh, Lucky uh, uh, Jensen or whatever it is, the the, um, uh, the devil, little devil, little Nicky. It was great to see him uh, go back to doing his voice and like he could talk like, oh no, my diamonds are all uncut. Oh no. But the title's misleading. When I went to see Uncut Gems, I'm thinking, oh boy, finally we get the full version of Casablanca, the full version of Gone with the Wind, some of these gems from classic cinema. And instead it was a new movie, which it was okay. I liked it, but uh, it was no Casablanca. I think Pixar is back with Jojo Rabbit. You know, this is such a wonderful children's movie, you know. And the animation, where they're get, what, what they're getting now with the 3D animation, the Pixar technology, it looks almost like a real live action movie at this point, you know. And it's daring and interesting and sophisticated for Pixar to introduce Adolf Hitler as sort of a main character, you know. And I'm glad some of the, you know, uh, baggage surrounding him is sort of starting to lighten up a little bit. So, you know, Pixar's gotten Oscar gold before and, and they're going to get it again with this one. And Jojo Rabbit reminds me of Jojo Dancer, mm -hmm. Your Life is Calling, starring Richard Pryor. Irrelevant. Well, there's only two movies I know of called with Jojo in the title. You've got Gigi with Leslie Caron, but that's a similar mm -hmm. G-I, G-I, J-O, J-O, but different movie. <laughs> kind of the same thing, isn't it? The Frozen Two Popes. Why not combine these movies and, and uh, save us all some time? Although, I don't want to save time if it comes to seeing two great movies, and these are two great movies. I'm going to give the nod to Frozen 2 because I think the movie was shut out of the Oscars last time, and undeservedly so. And I think Oscar does like to make amends for its past mistakes, and I think they will this year, and for that I salute them. I haven't, uh, I'm not familiar with either of those films. I'm going to go with Ad Astra, and they should add a an asterisk to this movie because it will be the first time an actor has won, uh, an actor like Brad Pitt has won a movie uh, for being, and, and ha that character having lived in space for a period of time. That'll be the first time that's happened. I'm going to go with Maleficent because I think it's time that truly horrific circumstances get recognized by Oscar, and I think they know that there has been a few too many feel-good movies like your Chariots of Fire, that type of thing, winning in recent times, and I think they want to show the world that horror is here to stay, and what better horror film than Maleficent 2? I'm not a big fan of the Mr. Rogers um, uh, mentality, which is dangerous to children. It encourages the everybody gets a trophy mentality, which is sick. And he's created a, you know, a terrible uh, plague in our country of weak uh, adults, weak young adults. And so he should be admonished and shamed uh, and thrown into the dustbin of history. But Tom does a terrific job portraying him. I can't give him, so you have people that have played people like Stalin and uh, Hitler and uh, Pol Pot in movies. And, you know, they have to play it honestly. And Tom does a great job of that. Yeah, I have a problem with both of these movies. With the Mr. Rogers movie, why are you making movies about TV shows? Let's stick to topics that moviegoers are interested in. We're not interested in TV shows. With Mr. America, the director is a, a really a terrible person who shot over 10 hours of interviews with me as I took him around the Victorville Film Archive. And I was assured that this was all going to be the main meat of the film and when we watched the film uh, you got 30 seconds I think of information about oh god and I'm getting cards and letters constantly from people who are really irate who are saying this is not what we were promised and I have to agree with them and I'm sorry that the movie was released. Well Mr. America isn't really a movie. Uh, no. It's, uh, it's a hit job, it's a slanderous piece of libelous uh, trash that should be discarded and the prints and the negatives and everything should be set aflame 
almost like in the great uh, Quentin Tarantino movie, uh, Inglorious Bastards. And uh, so everybody you, that you're sees admitting it, that you like to burn movies. Everybody right that sees that movie should be put to death. <laughs>